are certain people throughout history who have just had this certain something that they seem more alive or have had an ability to shape reality around them. I wanted to see what was it that made some people not just special, but somehow totally break the mold of what people think is possible for human life. And for that reason, I started studying the occult. A witch stirring her cauldron for a wicked spell. A magician practicing black magic. A psychic holding a seance. What do these images all have in common? They are all stereotypes that many people think of upon hearing the word occult. Witches were shrouded in myth, fear, suspicion. But despite their bad reputations for being associated with the dark arts, are occultist practices really evil? Rituals really are tools. They're, they can be used for good or bad purposes. And if they're not inherently evil, how did these practices get to be associated with such social disgrace and disapproval in the first place? And what then is the true goal of occult magic? Occult originates from the Latin word oculere, meaning conceal. The dictionary defines the word occult as involving or relating to supernatural, mystical, or magical powers or phenomena. Historically, many of these occult practices have been hidden or practiced in the shadows of society. Well, occult just means hidden, and uh, anything that people feel is hidden from them it's like when the lights are off and the room is dark, you assume something is there that's not. It could be scary. Many occult practices involve the use of magic. The word magic, as defined by Wikipedia, is the application of beliefs, rituals, or actions practiced with the view that they can subdue or manipulate natural or supernatural beings or forces. To me, that's what magic is, or spell working, or anything. Something that causes a shift in the natural trajectory. In life, nature, everything kind of goes in the easiest pattern to me. Almost flows downhill like mm -hmm. gravity. Our life, if we don't put this to it, this is going to take the easy path. Magic is going, I'm going to shift that. I mean, whether it's my perception or myself around the world within me. Due to these beliefs in the supernatural, the term occultism has taken on a rather negative connotation, as these practices tend to oppose the prevailing worldview which is rooted in science. Practices considered to be occult include divination, alchemy, astrology, psychic readings, performing magic, and even some religions such as Wicca, Voodoo, and Paganism. Many of these practices are having a resurgence in modern society, including the ancient Norse art of rune casting and song. Runic scholar Kedrick Olson teaches how to practice these sacred incantations for manifestation, transformation, and healing. The old form of Norse magic is called galdr, mm -hmm. and it means basically singing the runes. If they were to sing, lao kaz, that brings that healing energy into the person that they're directing it towards. The way I like to think of it yeah. is that they are the subtle connections between the subtle layers of our consciousness and the subtle layers of existence. Mm -hmm. And you don't need the actual shape the, or the sound or the name to tap into that. Some of the most prominent figures of the occult world help to define and spread these practices. Perhaps the most well-known person in all things occult is Aleister Crowley, an English magician who lived in the early 20th century. He was a member of the secret society, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. He founded the religion of Thelema and wrote several books, including the Book of the Law. He is credited with adding a K to the end of the word magic in order to differentiate between those doing stage tricks and those who are performing true magic. Crowley is known for practicing what he called sex magic, experimenting with drugs and altered states of reality. 
and for sensationalizing his practices in order to manipulate the media and gain fame. Well, Aleister Crowley was an extraordinary figure. He was a great artist. I think in many ways he was a great intellect. In many ways he was a truly great explorer into the occult. But he didn't provide the ethical guardrails in his life, in his works, or in the lives of his students that would help them not get sucked into a kind of magical right. narcissism. It's a recipe for great personal danger and danger to other people around you. While Crowley might have practiced both white and black magic, most experts suggest that this is in the minority and that the majority of practitioners use only positive intentions in their practices. In fact, many disciplines, including magic and witchcraft, have moral codes that are not to be crossed if you are practicing white magic. White magic is magic that is undertaken for one's own personal evolution. It's, for instance, yoga, meditation, the spiritual quest, understanding spiritual techniques. Something for humanity, basically. Uh, yes, and ultimately something for humanity. It's the, the vertically raising oneself to be all that you can. My definition of black magic would just be things done purely for personal or material gain without any spiritual focus. People who dabble in the dark side of magic will get their fingers burnt. Until you get your fingers burnt, you don't fully understand how important it is to be rigorous with following the rules. Mm -hmm. There's actually three laws, very important. Do what you want, but don't hurt anyone. Do what you want, but don't interfere with another person's free will. And as you send out, so return threefold. A cause and effect action and reaction, what you come put out comes back to you. That's why I wouldn't do curses or dark spells. Because if you live in a world, I'm gonna curse you, then you live in a world where curses exist. If you give and you're generous with your time, with your money, with your love, that's what comes back to you. If you do something from a place of insecurity, fear, and thinking, I can't have it unless I manipulate, then you're not ever really gonna have that, that intrinsic power that allows you to experience a really full and happy and abundant life. If most occult practices keep to these moral codes and most practitioners are practicing white magic, why is it then that many of these disciplines have been demonized by society? The idea of paganism being that it was pre-Christian when the Christian faith established itself as a dominant religious mindset, mm -hmm. then what came before it had to be evil and debased. And, and so that sort of threw paganism into that bracket. And then we have the pagan god, Lord of the Forest Pan. It's a horned god, he's got horns and half his body's an animal. And it's, it's more metaphorical than literal, but that image of Satan came from that, that image of the, the horned god. The witch stereotype is the witch of popular imagination. Normally a woman who is part of this large conspiracy with other witches to worship the devil, renounce Christianity. That person did not exist. Uh, what did exist were shamans and wise women and seers. Usually the negative stereotypes of witchcraft are based in ignorance and a lack of information. So I think the information age has actually been really, really healthy for the international magical community. If authentic magic isn't inherently bad or evil, then what is the true purpose of studying it? The act of living a magical life is a perpetual act of transformation and of evolution, personal evolution. Adopting magic or any other spiritual path turns you into the best version of yourself. It allows you to find your purpose in life. And that's what people lack more than anything uh, right now. They're, they have all this stuff and all this media, but they don't know who they are and they don't know what their life is for and magic unveils that for you. Once you have that, then you're going along with the current of the universe and the doors just open for you. If one is drawn to the magical arts, does one need to already possess magical abilities in order to join a practice? I think we're all born with it, and it's just, it's like going to the gym and learning to work out, to, to just allow that intuition to come through. There's exercises you can do, there's meditations you can do. It's really just about shutting down your left brain. You have to get reason and logic out of the way and allow that world where that right brain side where anything can happen. We have a tendency to want to say, that's the magic. The magic is the runes, the magic is the cards, the magic is the I Ching. We are the magic. Absolutely. I believe that everybody has divine gifts. It's do you want to use them or not? Anybody can do this if they want it. It's really easy 
to change your life. It doesn't take money, it doesn't take a lot of time. If you've got something you feel like it's a curse, grab a lemon, grab some salt, do this thing, and guess what, it goes away. Despite hundreds of years of perpetual dismissal as evil or quackery, occult practices have persisted on in the shadows of society, with the majority having altruistic and benevolent intentions. Today, with the internet and social media, these ancient magical practices are becoming less hidden, and therefore the stigma and fear of them is improving. However, many practitioners of magic encourage others to approach the magical life as a serious, modern, spiritual path in order to really benefit from all it has to offer in one's own life and one's relationship to the world and universe at large.